Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Sorry, I know it has been so long since I last posted a video, but with the holidays, everything got a little crazy and I've just been super busy since the year started. So I'm finally getting to it now, but I thought I would do a video to share with you guys some of the things that I got while I was on my trip in Japan back in October. And of course, to talk about how I thought the Kotakumi concert was for her real life tour, Black Cherry and Japanesque. Also, I wanted to talk about the brief interview that I had when I landed in Japan. So we'll start with that first. So right when I landed in Japan, there was a bunch of people that came running over to my husband and I asking me, oh, excuse me, excuse me, can we can we interview you? And so I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And so they had a man that was interviewing me and he would ask a question in Japanese and then there was a translator and then she would ask me in English. And so they basically asked me if I was here for the, if I was there for the World Rugby Cup, which honestly, guys, I had no idea that that was happening at that time. So yeah, I was like, no, I'm not here for that. And so then they're like, oh, well, what brings you to Japan? So I told them, well, I've always dreamed of going to Japan since I was little. And I'm also here for a Kodokumi concert. And so they asked me a little bit about since I'd wanted to come since I was little and I was like, well, I'm fascinated with the culture and the food. And I just think it's very interesting and I love the history. And, but then they were like, oh, Kodokumi. And so then I, they asked, started to ask me, um, oh, so you're a fan of Kodokumi. How did you hear about her? And so I let them know, oh, well, it was back in, you know, 2002 or 2003 when Final Fantasy X-2 came out and she did the beginning, the theme song, Real Emotion. And um, they're like, oh, wow, so you've known her that long. I was like, yes, I've been a fan for 17 years. And um, I'm seeing her live for the first time in concert um, in Osaka. And they were like, oh, my gosh, so for 17 years, and this is your first time seeing her. So they were just, like, blown away by that. And then they kept asking me, like, tons of questions about Kodokumi. And they asked me, you know, what do I like about her? What do I? How do I think she's different from Western artists and all this? And so I just I answered the questions as best I could. I was like, well, I just – I. I love her. She is a true artist. She writes her own music. Um, not all of them, but a lot of her songs. And she's a great dancer and she's a great entertainer. And I love a lot of her lyrics. So they've really helped me through different parts of my life. And they just seem to just be really interested in it. And they said, um, they asked me at the end if I could write down my email address. So they could email me after the concert to see how my experience was. So I never got an email from them. So, you know, I don't know, but it'd be kind of cool if Kodokumi saw that and was like, oh my gosh, someone was coming to see me from another country. So yeah, but I doubt she'll see it, but you know, it, it was cool. I got to feel famous for a second. All right, guys. So the next thing I want to show you is some of the little trinkets that I got while I was in Japan. Some of them was for family and I have already given those to my family members. So I don't have them with me anymore. But I got this little tori gate when we were at Ushimi Inari Shrine in Kyoto. And so I've always wanted one of these little things to go on my shelf. So now I have one. And then I have sitting underneath it on my shelf this little, little lucky cat that I got from one of the gacha machines. So that's the little cat. And I set it underneath my tori gate on my shelf. Then I also in the gotchas found, of course, the Sailor Moons, and I love Sailor Moon. You guys should know that about me. Also, by the way, I mm, the last and final season part two on Blu-ray of Sailor Stars came out, and guys, I was so happy and stoked. So of course, I have it. So my heart is very happy right now. So this is my little Sailor Moon here, little Princess Serenity. She is adorable. I really like the way they did their faces on these. Like they're not creepy looking at all and they're all super cute. So this was Princess Serenity. There's one more, there's a Sailor Moon, but I didn't want the number to be odd on my bookshelf. So I just didn't worry about getting her. And it took me a while to find these because these are from the Twinkle Star Collection 2. And so I knew there was a one, but I couldn't find any gotcha machines with the ones. So then I went around to several, when we got to Denden Town, that's when we found all the anime stores, Denden Town and Osaka. And that was when I actually found these for individual sale in a few shops. And so I was so excited. I think I paid like $6 for them or something like that. So it wasn't bad at all. And I was just, I was so happy. So here's little Sailor Mars and oh my gosh, she's adorable. I love how she's holding her charm. And next we have Sailor Mercury and she looks super cute too. I love the pose. 
I just think these are so adorable. They're very well crafted in my opinion for being such like a cheap toy. Here's my girl Sailor Jupiter rocking it as always. I love the way the hair looks, like the effects of how they did all of that. It's fantastic. And then also here is our Sailor Beans. Last one and her head is mostly hair, but it is so cute, so adorable. And I'm so happy. So I put these on top of my computer because they're adorable. All right guys, so next thing I was trying to, which not near as good, you know, but I tried to recreate my photo shoot look where I tried to do the same kind of eyeshadow, but obviously I failed because those people were amazing. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I just tried to play around and have fun and just threw my hair up in something. And this is the kimono that I bought. And I got this when we were in Kyoto at Fushimi Inari Shrine. There were several shops that had different kimonos. And so I bought this one. I just thought it was really beautiful. Purple is my favorite color. And so I saw it and I just, I loved like the cherry blossom look on it. And it has a shrine or a temple and a bridge. And I just, I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And so of course this isn't like a real kimono. I mean, it's just like made of polyester and it's just got a little, a tiny little belt. So it's just like a, a cool little summer kimono, but, and I think it was $65, something like that. But you know, I, it was just so cute and I couldn't turn it down. And I just was like, well, you know, at least I can be cozy at home or feel festive or whatever. So I just, I thought it was so beautiful and stunning. I just love the pictures on it. And it's just a good little piece of Japan to take back with me. And I, I just love this guys. It makes me so happy. I'm just in my happy place. Also with the photo shoot, they had given me this, this little card that they gave me when I completed it. They said, oh, this is a free gift for you. So they give you a laminated card of one of your photos. Don't know if you can see it, but yeah. And so I thought that was really nice of them and they bowed and they handed it to me and uh, I, I just miss how nice all the people were. <laughs> so then this is the photo book that they give you when you're done. So this is what I got in my um, photo plan that I had done. So it's, it's a pretty well, very nice high quality photos that you can see. So like that's my first photo and you get to pick which ones you want printed. And so I had these all printed for me because they were some of my favorites. I had my husband help me pick them because <laughs> it was so hard because I was just so blown away by the quality of them. And I was like, can I get the whole book? <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't have that kind of money. So, um, but some of these were just stunning. And I just, oh my gosh, guys, I'm like obsessed. My husband, <laughs> he laughed because he told me that like how I have my Kodakumi posters back here that I should get a poster of myself <laughs> that's this big and put it on my wall. But you know, that's kind of a little weird and I don't want to look obsessed with myself. So, you know, I'm not going to do that. But yeah, I just, I thought this was such a cool photo book, a, a great take home and something that I'm going to literally remember for like my whole life. All right, guys, let's talk about it. So Kodakumi and the Real Life Tour. It was such an incredible experience. I never dreamed that I would get to go see Kotokumi live. And so literally when I got into the Osaka Joe Hall at, or that, not Osaka Joe Hall, but at the Oryx Theater and I got my seat. As soon as I saw my seat for the Black Cherry show, I was like, okay, okay. And I was getting so excited because I mean, I was right there like, you know, in a movie theater where there's like the big gap between the, the seating down there and the upward seating. Like I was literally right there. So I had all this leg room, which was great. <laughs> and, but it was still really close to the stage. Like it was like right in the middle kind of. So I had a great view of everything. And I started to like, as, the, when, as soon as the lights dimmed, like my heart was like this. I was so excited. And then I saw the, the curtain came up from the stage. And then I saw that tank, the fish tank on stage. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, oh, I'm freaking out. I was like, she's gonna come up with the fish tank. I can't believe I'm about to witness this like from 2007 and now she's doing it now in 2019. Like I could not believe it. And then here she came up in the fish tank and smiling and waving. I was like spazzing out. Okay guys, I probably <laughs> looked like a freak, but that's okay. I was just, I was so happy and I was, and of course, you know, here we go, guys, perfect. Had my blue 
stick. Of course, I had this in my hand, and I was going, and I was super excited. And the only thing, by the way, that I don't, didn't like about this is like when you go like this with the music, this thing slowly comes up, and I felt like it was about to fly off and hit someone. So I just kept my finger on it like this and did this the whole time because I didn't want to hit someone by accident, and I didn't want to lose a part of my light stick. So the concert was incredible. I loved the whole first segment at the Black Cherry. I really enjoyed the yellow pirate outfit. The dancing was fantastic. And like to be able to see her dance live, I, cause like, you know, sometimes when you watch a live on tour on like a Blu-ray or DVD, I feel like sometimes you think that just because the camera angles, it makes the dance look better, if, if you know what I mean. And so getting to see it live, like she seriously dances just as good as she does in the music videos and just on the DVDs. And it was just fantastic. And it was also good for me to, cause I always wanted to know like how tall she was. And like, I've read about how tall she is, but I just wanted to like see it in person. And so, but she's so adorable and she's so beautiful. And guys, I was so excited when she sang Yumi no Uta and she hit those notes. She hit that high, high note and I was just like, I got chills and I was just so excited. So then when she goes into doing her ballad section and she came out singing Candlelight, at one point, I don't remember which song, was it Twinkle? It might've been Twinkle, but she got on the little platform and it raised her up in the air above us. And like, so then she's like waving to us. So when she goes up on the platform and she's like waving to everybody, it's probably silly for me to say this, but you know, I, I felt like for a second, like me and her were connecting and like that she was looking right at me and waving. And I was like, look at me. I came from all the way from America to see you. I love you. That's what I wanted to say, but I didn't want to sound like a freak. So yeah, but that's what I was just thinking. And I just felt and I was so excited and I was just like, you're amazing. But of course I was just going Woo, and singing along and all that. So. It was amazing. So then we have Relive Tour 2019 Japanese. And okay guys, after the first night, I was so excited for Japanese. Like I like Black Cherry, but like Japanese was also just amazing. And I love the whole theme of it. And so I was really excited. And the coolest part was that me and the other Kodokumi fan club members that I met with, um, we were all like pretty much sitting right next to each other and I was even closer to the stage for that one And so I was super excited and so the lights dimmed down the screen used to cherry blossom petals falling And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening and it was so cool to watch but when this when the Curtain went up and like you see like all the props for like the staircase and the railing like coming down from the ceiling and like setting it all up It was just it was so cool to watch and just incredible and so I was so excited. And then of course, here she comes and then she shows up on stage and I like the way you want me, multi, 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 oh, and it's so nice. And I was just like freaking out. I was screaming along with everybody else, you know, with my red fan here this time. And oh! so, yeah, I actually, I like this fan a lot more. I think it's really cool, but that's because I like the fan, but this one is a lot more uncomfortable to hold. I learned very quickly holding this for the whole concert and going like this. It's just an awkward shape and this like dug into my hand the whole time. But you know, that wasn't going to stop me for, you know, putting my all out there for Kujan. So the whole beginning part of the Japanese was beautiful. And then I was so stunned when she went up on the, the stand and she did like the big dress thing like she did in her 15th anniversary, The Artist. And like they did all the projector um, stuff all over her dress. It was so beautiful and I was like tearing up and it was just so powerful and gorgeous. And to like see that in person and like a hall tour, like it was so powerful. It was such a cool thing. I was really happy and excited to see her perform Pink Spider again and to do kind of another retake with like the cage thing. I thought that was super cool. And then she sang the song Slow, which I was super excited for. And it was just so good to hear her sing some of those songs that like really only got sung like one time. And it was just such a good throwback to all of it. One of the things I was most excited about too, which I have to share. So I always, you know, wonder why she doesn't sing some of her songs in concert. But so when we got to the encore of the Japanese one that night, 
Um, she took questions, I guess, from some of the fans that they put in before they went into the concert. And so they read the question out and I'm assuming I couldn't understand everything that was being said, but it was like, why don't, haven't you sung Love Technique? And guys, oh my gosh, she sang like the chorus of Love Technique on stage, like acapella. And it was so awesome. She's like, Love Technique, baby, love technique, baby, love, 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 love. And like, she sang the whole chorus thing. And I was like, ah, I was so excited. And I was like, please sing it, sing the whole thing right now. Let's do it. But of course she didn't. And but just getting that brief little bit, like I could just hear, oh, it was amazing. So I wish you guys could have all been there to hear that because I love that song. I think it's so adorable. And so I wish she would sing it more often. But just so you guys know, she did sing it on stage for like a second. So it was so awesome. And then also I have to show you guys, of course, which you probably saw in my pictures. I have my Japanese tour shirt that I got. And then I also got the Black Cherry t-shirt, had to represent. So surprisingly, like I thought this one would be my favorite, but in a weird way, and I can't even begin to really explain why, but I really like this Japanese shirt. And when I first saw all these, I was like, they're all kind of ugly in my personal opinion. But I don't know, this like shirt really grew on me and like, I guess it's like this color and like the length of it. I wear it with leggings and it's just really cozy and comfortable. And so I don't know, like I really like this one. And I mean, I still wear this black cherry one a lot and I got some kind of some stain on it. And yeah, I don't know what happened. So <laughs> maybe I can still get it out. And then also these, this is the key that I wore for the black cherry. And of course, though, I didn't get drawn to go on stage, which is really disappointing. And then this is the little car key pass um, for the Japanese one that you could wear. Try not to hit the chopstick with my hair. All right. And then these are the gorgeous tickets, guys, which I will cherish for like the rest of my life. So these are my tickets to her concert. So I was so excited when I saw these, I was like, the tickets are in my hand. This is really happening. Like I did not want to believe I was going until I had these in my hand. So there they are guys in all their glory and her gorgeous picture. And then it's stamped on the back when I got there to let them know. And they even had like my name written, like my whole name written on my tickets. And I was just so excited. I was like, they're expecting me. She knows I'll be here. And so yeah, that's me. And then also you got a little special gift before the show started each night. And so the first night for the Black Cherry one, I got this little Japanese keychain. And then on the Japanese night, I got the Black Cherry keychain. They did like opposites, not sure why, but you know, regardless, it's that picture from like that she used to promote the Relive tour. And that's gonna be on the DVD and Blu-ray covers for the live. But I thought that they were really cute and I haven't decided what I'm doing with them yet. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to put it on my key ring that I actually use. So I don't know, but we'll figure it out. And so this was just the most awesome experience. And I was just, there's no words to describe how happy I am about it all. I just can't stop playing with all my stuff. So we also know that her real life tour is coming out to purchase here soon in March. And so just so everyone knows, I have already pre-ordered my copy. I am getting the fan club edition. Um, I just couldn't, I thought about it for a long time and it's hard because it's so expensive and, but it's like almost the same price. Okay. It's a little bit more expensive, but almost the same price as buying the two separate Blu-rays, which I do plan on getting at some point because I love having the high quality versions of it. And also that the Blu-rays are all regions. So I don't have to worry about regions, but uh, I just, I couldn't pass up all the extras that are in this Relive fan club edition. I mean, there's the remix album, there's the documentary, which comes on the other ones, but then there's the music videos for Get Naked and Strip and Shut Out, and I really want those, and then the whole photo book, and I know there's like a different edition, like if you buy it from a Lawson or something like that, but yeah, it's... So that one's got the Black Cherry cover and the one I'm getting has the Japanese cover. 
which I'm actually a little bit happier about because I just, I love that. So I'm really excited to when I do receive it. So I will definitely do an unboxing video for you guys as soon as I do get that in the mail and we'll see kind of what everything looks like. I don't really know fully what to expect with it, but I am really excited for it. Also, I do have a review coming for her latest album, record. So don't worry, it's coming. I'm so sorry that it's been so delayed. I just haven't had time to do a lot. So I'm really excited just to get here and get this video done for you guys so you can just see everything and see everything that I got because I'm super happy about it all. And it was just such an incredible experience. And guys, if you ever get a chance to see Kodakumi live, I highly recommend it. She is fantastic. And I wish I could be there for whatever she does for this 20th anniversary this year. But you know, that's just not feasible financially wise. That costs me money. And so I'm just grateful because I wanted to make sure I saw her live before she decides to retire. And I have officially done that now. So I feel at peace, I guess, with it now. But of course, I would love to see her again. I will definitely try to if it's at all possible in the future. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and hearing about my experience and seeing the things that I got. And I will see you again soon in an album review. Bye.